So we've looked at the one-way ANOVA and the repeated measures ANOVA. This time I want us to look at the two-way ANOVA. It's called a two-way ANOVA because we have two independent variables as opposed to one independent variable. The previous examples that we've looked at have each had one independent variable. So in this particular research problem, we want to compare heart rate values obtained on two different cyclogometers. So we've got participants to cycle on two different types of cyclogometer and we've measured their heart rate. But we've measured their heart rate across five different exercise intensities as we can see there. 100 through to 300 watts. And we've done that on both agometers. So our independent variables are the type of agometer, which has two levels, agometer 1 and agometer 2. And our second independent variable is exercise intensity, which has five levels, 100 watts through to 300 watts. So essentially, we're going to find out whether there is an effect of agometer on heart rate, whether there's an effect of intensity on heart rate, which there should be, because as the intensity gets higher, we would expect our heart rate also to get higher. But we're also going to see if there's an interaction between the ergometer and the intensity on the measure of heart rate. So, the two-way analysis of variance. We can input the data into SPSS the way it was written on the Excel spreadsheet in the previous screen. In terms of labelling the variables, all I've done is I've used letters to denote which ergometer we're using and then numbers to denote the intensity. So this one here is ergometer 1 intensity 100 watts and we've gone through to 300 there and then ergometer 2 intensity 100 watts through to 300 there. In terms of our analysis we click analyze we're going to go general linear model and repeated measures again for our factors I've already added them our factors are our independent variables. So the first one, of course, is ergometer, which has two levels. The second one is intensity, which, of course, has five levels. And then the thing we're measuring is heart rate. I've put heart rate as one word because SPSS doesn't let me separate the words into, into two. Usually, all of our measures, if you like, will be listed in this box. I've just moved them to the other side. It can be quite time consuming but it works on the same lines as the repeated measures ANOVA. In terms of our options I'm going to display means for everything as I did in the previous test. We want to compare the main effects and we want the Bonferroni post hoc test again as we had in the previous tests and again we want the descriptive statistics. So once we've got to this point in the SPSS repeated measures uh, menu here we can click OK and it will provide us with an output. SPSS always gives us lots of outputs but the first one we need to be interested in with the repeated measures ANOVA and the two-way ANOVA is Morshley's test of sphericity. So remember we've got each of our uh, measures here so we've got ergometer intensity and the ergometer intensity interaction at the bottom here and then we've got the significant values, significance values for each, so they're all less than 0.05, so we need to read the greenhouse geyser for each of them. So if we read the greenhouse geyser then for ergometer, it says there is a significant difference between the ergometers. If we read the greenhouse geyser for intensity, it's telling us that there's a significant effect of intensity, which we expect. And then if we look at the ergometer intensity interaction, there's no significant effect. So essentially, the difference between the ergometers is consistent. So there's not a significant difference between the ergometers, say, at 100 watts, but not at 150 watts. There's a significant difference between the ergometers at each exercise intensity. And that's the two-way analysis of variance.